This Saturday, H&S Feed and Country Store in Oskaloosa invites you to stop by from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. as they're hosting a celebration you don't want to miss. Join H&S Feed and Country Store as they mark 20 incredible years of service with their much-anticipated checkerboard day. There will be family fun activities, delicious food, exciting giveaways, and live entertainment. Bring your friends and family and let's make this a day to remember as we celebrate 20 years at H&S Feed and Country Store in Oskaloosa from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. this Saturday, August 24th. Sigourney Kyoto football fans, Steve Shuttler Media is teaming up with Clint Dye of Tag Team Photography to bring you coverage of Sigourney Kyoto football this fall. You've seen Clint's fantastic photos of Sigourney Kyoto football over the last few years. And now Clint is bringing those talents to be showcased on Steve Shuttler Media. We're going to have pictures and action shots of each and every game, an in-depth article, and a video highlight of the game as well. You won't miss a thing with Sigourney Kyoto football coverage right here this year on Steve Shuttler Media. Central Empire Wrestling presents Bridge City Slam 6 live Saturday, September 7th at the Bridgeview Center in Ottawa. Come see Jake the Snake Roberts, Buff Bagwell, former WWE Tag Team Champions Demolition, Real One Enzo Amore, The Powers of Pain, The Boogeyman, Snitsky, Jordan Grace, Cameron Brene, and the stars of CEW. Tickets start at just $20 and include the Fan Fest from 4 to 7 p.m. Get your tickets through Ticketmaster or at the Bridgeview Center in Ottumwa. It's Bridge City Slam 6, live Saturday, September 7th at the Bridgeview Center in Ottumwa. New Life Fellowship in Keswick, Iowa is hosting the Victorious Living Conference Friday, August 23rd through Sunday, August 25th with guest pastors Luke and Jana Hobbs from Tennessee. You're invited to make plans to join New Life Fellowship in Keswick for this dynamic time of anointed worship, teaching, and ministry. New Life Fellowship is located just south of Keswick on Highway 22. The conference schedule is Friday, August 23rd at 7 p.m., Saturday, August 24th at 6 p.m., and Sunday, August 25th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. We hope to see you for the Victorious Living Conference. Hey, oh, there we are. That's what I'm talking about turn this music down. It's time for some real talk here on Steve Shuttler Media, brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman. Of course, we are broadcasting from the Oski, Oski Dental, Dental Studios. Studios. Yes, there we are. Aaron Fleming, how the heck are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, he's the Aaron half of Aaron and Steve. I'm Steve. The Steve half. <laughs> We were uh, we were talking about the Olympics before we came on air, and Steve promised that he would show off some of his breakdancing moves. And there you go, folks. <laughs> I just hurt myself. <laughs> you know, if they were going to do breakdancing in the Olympics, why then why didn't they start it like forty years ago when it was like the Michael Jackson phase? I didn't even know that breakdancing was still a thing, and then all of a sudden it shows up in the Olympics. But and that Australian woman doing whatever she was doing. I didn't. I didn't know that curling was a thing either. But it's in the Olympics, yeah. so uh, who knows? Who knows what sport? Uh, hey, why don't you tell us in the comments what sport would you like to see in the next Olympics? If we could eliminate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a diving event because there's a lot of diving events and there's a lot of swimming events, but not many auto racing events. Yeah. <laughs> Olympic auto racing. How about, yeah, how about Olympic dirt track figure eight racing? There you go. Dem could, the Olympic demolition derby. How about that? That would be <laughs> awesome. I would tune in to see that. And there's, there's some countries that. Like, like the rich countries always do the best in the Olympics, sure. right? It's, it's obvious. Uh, the United States, China, Great Britain, France, the countries with money, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I, think, I think there's some countries out there that could put together some good demolition cars because <laughs> they got old cars, you know? That's true. I, there, there's also an event in Oskaloosa called the Redneck Rally, which... Yeah, you have to see it to understand it. It's like it's it's not a demolition derby, but it's 
it's crazy. Maybe they should do an Olympic redneck rally. Redneck rally. Yeah. I'm all for that. So we're talking about the Olympics, even though it's been over for a week. By the time we, we go to air with this episode, yep. uh, the Olympics will be... Uh, a memory and and the gold medals will already be gathering dust on people's uh, trophy cases. But, uh, well, maybe not. I, I bet you get more than two weeks of happiness out of an Olympic <laughs> gold medal. Uh, all of my high school running medals are in a box down in yeah. the basement. And the box is molding and falling apart and covered with moss, I think. Uh, <laughs> but, but an Olympic medal, maybe you enjoy that a little bit longer. But uh, our, our theme for the last couple of weeks here and our theme at New Life Community Church in Wellman, where I pastor, has been gold medal living. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 says, Don't you know that in a race every runner runs, but only one gets the prize? So run in such a way as to win the prize. So in other words, live life in such a way that, that uh, live life in a way that's worthy of, of the gift that God has given you, the gift of eternal life, uh, the gift of salvation, the gifts and abilities that God has given you, whether, uh, you know, some people have obvious gifts, like they're really good at, you know, radio. Hmm. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> yes, out there. Yes, there are those people, yeah. There are those people. Some, <laughs> some people, if you've got a good voice, you do radio. If you've got a good face, you do TV. Uh, <laughs> And some of us are just loving and others are good at uh, dirt track racing. And, yeah. You know, you're break good dancing. at a, break, break dancing. Some of us are, I am not an excellent break dancer. Um, but whatever it is, are, are you are you using that in such a way as to bring honor and glory to God? Um, so on the theme of the Olympics, Steve, mm -hmm. you've probably heard me talk before about handoffs in the sprint relays sure you gotta pass the baton you gotta pass the baton and there's one team in the world that i kind of enjoy watching that team's misery and failure <laughs> and our patriotic listeners are gonna be upset because that <laughs> team is the united states men's four by one team <laughs> i just don't know how to hand it off it's uh, it's astonishing. The U.S. men's 4x1 team has been disqualified in 11 out of the last 29 Olympics and World Championship competitions. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's 35% or more. Not, not, just, not just that we're not winning, but we're actually disqualified. Uh, we drop the baton, we run into each other, we run out of the lane. Uh, one of those disqualifications was for doping. So okay. we made the handoffs okay. <laughs> it was just the drug connection that caught up with us. Uh, so, And you got to um, wonder how many of those 11 times that we would have won. You know, probably at least a few of them. At, at least a few. At least a few. Uh because we consistently have the best sprinters in the world. There's eight people in the finals of the 100 meter dash. And we often have two, if not three. And then maybe one other country. Sometimes, like when Jamaica was really dominant, Jamaica would also have two or three guys in the 100 meter finals. And, and then they would usually beat us. Like when Usain Bolt yeah. was, was crushing the world in, in everything in the sprints. Uh, Jamaica would beat us just straight up on speed. But for the most part, we've got the most talented sprinters in the world. And yet we cannot pass the baton. And so I have a, I have a morbid fascination with it. I, I admit, I admit, it's unpatriotic. It's probably even unkind, Steve. It's kind of like Iowa, watching Iowa's offense, being an Iowa Hawkeye football fan. <laughs> <laughs> there comes a point where you start to enjoy... Yeah. How terrible it is. <laughs> it becomes a pastime of, uh, you know, how, how bad could this be? Hey, how are we going to be? Did you get to the, the fall kids day practice? Or I did anything? not. Nope. I didn't get to it, but I mean, they're popping up at like at number 25 on a bunch of preseason rankings. So that's, and I think that's reasonable considering the strength of the defense. Yeah. Uh, I did. I watched, uh, like a eight minute video titled Iowa, open practice offensive highlights <laughs> didn't take too long did it <laughs> mm. 
I'm not sure where the highlights were. <laughs> I I think there were two passes that traveled more than five yards downfield. All right. Yeah. So that's a big change over last year. <laughs> <laughs> last year, four yards was a pretty long pass. Yeah. So we'll see. We will see. Anyway, uh, you didn't turn in, tune in today to hear us talk about sports the whole time. <laughs> although we usually do. Yeah. We do. We do like our sports around here. Uh, it's it's really the connections in the four by one that I wanted to talk about, and since we're talking football too, we're really gonna have football on our brain. Yeah, coming up here because oh yeah, it's we're almost re- here. We're recording this on August thirteen, and and when's our when's our first first game? I mean, high school kind of has scrimmages coming up. Let's see here; it would be on the twenty third, and then the high school kicks off officially on the thirtieth. So and then yeah, I mean that. I don't know if that's the same re- same weekend for college football. Probably too. So I feel like college yeah, is almost here. like a, a week later. Okay. Like, how how are how are uh, the the Sigourney Kyoto Savages? Wait, oh, Cobras. Gr- we're Cobras in football. How how are we looking this fall? <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I, I'm guessing that they're going to be tough as usual, and of course, uh, uh, you know. What we're about ten minutes into this program, don't want to waste too much more time. But yeah, we'll be we'll have some coverage, not not like live streaming coverage, but we'll have pictures and an article and a weekly uh, game of the uh, play of the game for SK uh, here on Steve Shuttler Media. Going to have Pekin football live stream coverage. Uh, so lots of football coming up this fall here, right yeah. here. And you you want to make a connection when the when the quarterback throws the ball, you hope that it connects with the receiver. So on that theme. Uh, we've we've dipped into the book of Joshua a couple of weeks uh, uh, ago, the last couple of weeks, and um, so I want to I want to talk about dipping into the river. A river is just always a good symbol of an obstacle, something that you need to get across to get into the promised land, and that's that's one of the big stories early on in Joshua is the people come to the border of the promised land. It's the place they've been trying to get for 40 years, the place that God has promised to take them. And some of you out there have been waiting a long time to move into the promises of God. Um, and, And maybe you didn't know for a long time that you were waiting for God to move, but you just felt like there was something out there that life had more for you and you just couldn't find a way to crack into it. Or there was just one big obstacle that you were having trouble overcoming. So in the story of Joshua, there's a river and it's flood season. And so the river is out of its banks. And how are the people going to get across? And so you can read that story in uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter three. And, and here's how they do it. Um, they don't build a bridge. They don't build a dam. They don't build a tunnel. But Joshua instructs the priests to pick up the Ark of the Covenant. So if you've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, you you kind of know what the Ark of the Covenant is. It's, it's the place where the presence of God sat. Like the top of the, the Ark was called the Mercy Seat. And, and they called it that because it was kind of like God sat there. You know, if you wanted to go into the presence of God, um, that's where the presence of God was. So Joshua tells the priest, pick up the ark and carry it and step into the water. Interesting distinction there. You have to enter into the obstacle. There's no standing back and waiting and saying, well, you know, I'll move forward once the obstacle is gone. No, Joshua says you have to step into the water. You have to press into the obstacle that you are facing. And when you do that with the presence of God going with you, then the waters part. And then the, hey, check this out. The way that this works is that the water starts piling up at a place called Adam, which is 18 miles upstream. So the flow of the water is cut off 18 miles upstream. That means there's 18 miles of water that keep flowing after the priests step into the river. So it's going to take some time 
but slowly the river is going to start to go down and and you're going to see whoa hey something is happening here so i want to we just want to give everybody an encouragement connect with the presence of god and then press into your obstacles so we want to ask uh we we decided before the show, we need some comments in the comment section. <laughs> what is your favorite way of connecting with the presence of God? And I will turn that question to Steve and I. Oh. Favorite way of connecting with the presence of God? You go first. I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, the voice, is speechless. Um, some of my favorite times of <clears throat> connecting with the presence of God is... Uh, on a walk, especially if I can get outside of town, um, get down a gravel road and and uh, and pray and and maybe not have a huge agenda. You know, sometimes you go to God and you feel like you got a laundry list of prayer mm-hmm. requests. Oh, God, do this, do that. Um, and sometimes we're not sure how to pray. And sometimes just saying, "Hey, God, it's me, Aaron," and then and then being on a walk. And you start to feel the presence of God. Um, sometimes some of my favorite Bible reading times have just been lying on my bed. And I, I people in my family read in funny positions. Like you'll find a, a kid with their legs on the sofa and their body on the floor and a book held up in front of them or something. But I'll lie crossways on my bed or something like that and, and, uh, and just read the Bible um, at a random time of day. Lots of people try to have devotions early in the morning and I've never been an early morning guy. Yeah. So, you know, maybe at nine o'clock at night, grab the Bible and, and just lay crossways on the bed in some uncomfortable position. And, and, uh, so yeah, those are some fun ones for me. You want to hear a weird story from me? I would love to hear a weird story from you, Steve. This is like (laughs) opening up a little bit, A, a weird time that I like to, to pray. And to, and to connect with God is in the shower. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I, it's a horrible mental picture I'm painting here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, you know, you're alone. You have, you have maybe some worship music playing off in the speaker in the distance. And it's just, you know, you don't have to think about anything else. Uh, you just concentrate on talking to God for a while and, and kind of making that connection. You, then so. you're relaxed. You got and it's that. a ru- it's a routine thing too because uh, I, I am very much routine oriented, and uh, I need a specific time. Sometimes, obviously, it can happen whenever, but I need a specific time each day to be able to to be quiet, be still, uh, and that's a good time to do it. So I've I've always recommended that to people. Shower when you shower, pray. <laughs> that's really good i've done that some uh and, and have even like really had some cool revelations in the shower but uh yeah you're you're relaxed you're getting clean you're turning the hot water on um and and i like that steve is more of a routine guy than me i am i'm i'm pretty shotgun style yeah. with life just kind of scattershot so friends whatever whatever works for you to connect with god please do that and uh, let us know some of your favorite ways to connect with God down in the comments section. I think uh, that's that's probably pretty good yeah. for today. We'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. But uh, again, this is brought to you by New Life Community Church in Wellman, Iowa. We worship at ten o'clock on Sunday morning in the Park Ty- Parkside Activity Center, and we'd love to have you join us sometime. All right, so that'll do it for Real Talk. Again, brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman uh, with. Aaron and Steve will be back next Monday to do it again.